Sabrina here, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I turned the McCall's Emmy Top into a shirt dress. So for the top part of this dress, I just used the McCall's M8040 pattern as is. I made version A with the short sleeves from version C, and then to turn it into a shirt dress, I added a gathered skirt to the bottom and just continued the buttons all the way down the skirt. I did a couple other minor alterations, not even alterations to the pattern. I added lace on the cuffs as well as the edge of the facing pretty much all the way around the dress. And then I did change the cuffs to the point where I did not fold it over and make it half size cuff. I actually left it long after we turned it under and then just top stitched it just so the cuff was a little longer. Um, I just preferred the way that looked on my arm shape. So those are the only changes I made to it. Otherwise, the top is exactly the same. You can follow along with this video sort of as a tutorial. It'll just be shorter than the top that you would end up making if you made version B or C. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so jumping into making the McCall's M8040 Emmy shirt. I am making view A for the bodice with the view C sleeves for this particular make. And I want to go ahead and try to walk you guys through this step by step. So I already have my pieces cut out. Um, the rest of them are down there, but the four pieces that I'm working with so far I have up here. And for step one, if we go to the instructions, um, it asks you to interface the facing. Now, the last shirt I made, I did interface the facings, but the cotton that I'm using is so stiff that even after washing, the facings are just so, so stiff um, that I'm just going to cut out interfacing. I'm not going to worry about lining the facing. So I'm going to skip this part and move on to uh, step number two. Um, let's go ahead and stay stitch the... Uh, side edge of the front number one section above the waistline as shown. So I've got these guys laid out. Let me move this. This is piece one and this is piece two because we'll need that for the next step. And then I've got piece one over here and piece two over here. So I'm going to go ahead and stay stitch down here um, all the way from the top and then I'm going to go down to the waistline which is about here. Um, I don't have it marked on this piece but I'm going to do it by eye. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to my sewing machine and do that, and I will be back. Next, I'm going to show you how to attach piece number two to piece number one along the seam line. With right sides together, we're going to first attach this flat piece up to the flat piece in the armpit. As you can see, I have them both attached right sides together. So next, we're just gonna go ahead and sew these down at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So these pieces are both sewn now. Get this over here. Um, so these are both sewn together. You can see the two lines in there. And you can see that they have quite a bit of shape now. So they're actually going to hold that shape up by the bust line, which is something that I think these princess seams do beautifully. They give you that wonderful shape and it creates a very fitted silhouette um, without much effort on your part. You just put the shirt on and it's already pre-shaped for you. 
So in the pattern, it specifically asks you to press the seams forward. Now this is really important, again, for the silhouette of the shirt, just the way that it lays down. Um, and then you'll push, you'll press other seams in other directions later on during the pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use my new Taylor's ham that I just talked about in my last video. So let me switch over to the ironing board with the Taylor's ham and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so both of these are now pressed. The seam allowance is forward towards the buttons and button placket. And on the inside, it looks pretty nice. I did go ahead and serge the seams here. Um, one of them I did after I pressed and the other I did right before. Um, normally I actually serge all of my pattern pieces before I even begin sewing with them. And when I cut this one out, I guess I just didn't think about it. So I will probably be serging specific seams as we go just because I really like the finished look that um, it gives to the inside of a garment so that might be something a little All right so we just finished part three uh, which is part two for us because I skipped the interfacing but we'll go ahead and move on to the next part going forward I'll just use the correct numbers um, and we're going to pin sides three so both pieces of side three to the back which is piece four all right, so here is piece four laid out with the number three pieces on either side. I have lined them up at the little lines here. Gives you a little excess on the top and a little excess on the bottom here. So when I get those sewn together, uh, a little bit of that may be alleviated, but for the most part, it gets cleaned up with the armhole and the hem. So not a huge concern. I'm going to go ahead and just stitch these together, right sides together and then run them through the serger as well. So here are pieces three and four, or three, three, and four, all stitched up and then serged on the edge, and I will go ahead and press the seam to the back. This time they want the seam pressed towards the back piece, and so I'll go ahead and press that down now. All right, so step number five is to stitch the back and front sections together at the shoulders and sides. So go ahead and stitch them from the outside shoulder to the neckline and then I generally go top to bottom so I'll start at the armholes and head down to the hem here. All right so we are starting to actually have a shirt. It looks like something that you can actually put on. It kind of just looks like a little vest right now, uh, which is super cute, but we're going to continue on and make it an actual shirt. So I got the side seams done here. I'm going to go ahead and press this down towards the back. Um, the pattern does not specify pressing these seams in either direction. I prefer to press them to the back. Um, and then when I get to the armhole, I will hold those down to the back as well. And then I will also put the shoulder seams here to the back of the garment, I think. Yeah, we're gonna have a facing in here anyhow, so um, I think I'll just go ahead and press that to the back. And then later, if it tells me to do something different, I will do the different thing. But for now, look at that. You've got these beautiful princess seams in the front some similar princess seams in the back. That's what gives it that amazing shape. Um, I love the way that this pattern sits on the body. And next we will actually delve into the facing. So moving on to step number six, we're gonna go ahead and stitch the facing pieces together. Now, when I first made this shirt, I will say, I put the facing together backwards two times in a row. I don't know why that the shape just wigged me out and I kept putting it to the wrong side. So we're gonna do this together and I'm going to make sure to put the facing on correctly this time, hopefully the first time. If not, we can laugh about it together. So without further ado, let's tackle this facing.
step number seven, we're going to go ahead and get the facing pinned into the shirt. Uh, it calls it a jacket here. But we are going to put that in, stitch the front opening and the neck edges, and then try to understitch it as far as possible, um, which is not too bad. I think once I got the facing correct last time, it went in pretty quick. So we'll go ahead and do that. So the facing is in. I have not flipped it yet. I wanted to wait and do that with you guys just in case I did it backwards because I like to show that even people who have been sewing for a long time can still make silly mistakes. So, da 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 da. Okay, I think I, yeah, I did it right. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, so you can see I got the edges matched up there uh, for the facing and the fashion fabric which is good a lot of the time that does not work the way that you want it to um, so without a press it's looking like a faced piece of clothing at least at the moment so let's get it flipped over this corner looks good too a little off just a little off that's not too bad I am trying this year in 2020 to go through my sewing projects a little more slowly, pay more attention to little things like seam matching, and um, I haven't really moved on to pattern matching, mostly because I use uh, florals and a lot of non-directional print, so that hasn't been a big concern of mine, but definitely in the future I want to work on that as well. Okay, so, man, facings are just, it's like herding cats trying to get a facing to lie flat before you under stitch it or press it down so I think I've got it about as good as it's gonna get for now and here she is so now it is a vest with a facing so the next couple things are really what is gonna turn this into a shirt so I am going to go ahead and under stitch the facing I am starting to feel like Maybe I should have surged the edge because I don't like the way that it's unfinished around up here. I usually I usually surge them. So maybe I'll run this through the serger just on the outside. I don't know yet. I'll figure it out. So the facing is totally understitched. You may have noticed there were a couple points where I slowed down quite a bit when I was sewing um, around the curves. I just wanted to make sure that the facing was still on the correct side. You want to make sure that the seam allowance is on the correct side of the facing the entire time because that is what is going to keep it folded um, and turned over. And also when I got to the sleeve seams here, I was very, I went very slow and I just made sure that everything was where it needed to be so that this kind of four point intersection here, all the edges were where they needed to be. Um, and then these sides were clipped and that is also going to aid in the facing laying flat because it allowed the facing to spread um, 
as it was being sewn down. So I think what I'm going to do is finish the edge on this because I don't like that it is unfinished. So I'm going to run that through the serger, which shouldn't be too hard. I'll just go from just this corner. Um, I won't do the bottom and I'll go all the way around. And then we will move on to tacking the facing down on the shoulder seams. I'll go ahead and do that just by hand. And then I think it's just about time for sleeves. All right, so I went ahead and fixed this little issue that was just bothering me. I just did a quick surge around the facing um, and it just looks a lot nicer and more finished. And that's just my preferred method. Um, if you see that I have everything surged and you say, well, hey, I don't have a serger, but I want my ends to look nice, what can I do? I will link down below a video from Marika over at Enchanted Rose Costumes. She did a video not too long ago. I think it's 10 ways, 10 ways to finish seams without a serger. It's a great video and it definitely gave me other ideas besides surging. I will link that below so that those of you who don't have sergers can um, have other options when it comes to finishing your edges. Okay, so now that we have the sleeves laid out, I'll go ahead and do one at a time here to, just so it's easier to see. So now that I have the sleeves laid out, I'm going to gather at the top, you have these three dots, one, two, and three, and you're going to gather between those. So you'll sew two lines, of the longest stitch length that you have on your machine. I think mine goes to six. So I will do two lines right next to each other and then pull on those strings to gather them. So you'll do that at the top and then at the bottom as well um, and just all the way across the bottom. Uh, you'll do two lines just as, I mean, maybe a quarter inch and then another quarter inch is usually what I do. I like to put them really close to the edge because then if the cuff, when you finish the cuff, um, you don't have to remove them because sometimes I like to be lazy and I think that's okay. So we'll go ahead and sew in those gathering stitches for each of these pieces and I will come back and show you how much to gather. So next we're going to go ahead and gather up the top of the sleeve here. We'll also gather up the lower side of the sleeve here because this essentially needs to fit into this cuff. So we'll have to gather it so that it fits into that size. So to do that, you take the two string, two long strings on the fashion side of your fabric and you kind of pull the fabric along to create these gathers. I generally do it from one side and try to get it gathered as much as I can to the other side. And then I only use these strings at the end for adjusting where the gathers sit on the actual line of the garment. So I'll just kind of move these all the way over so I can have gathers at the end. This whole time I'm just holding on to these two strings. So now this is where I'll go grab these two if I can get them separated here. Come on. There we go. Got the two on the fashion fabric side and I'll just finish kind of gathering in the edges here just so I have it fairly consistent along the whole piece here. And then I'll do that to the other side to try to get them to match. And for me, I would rather gather up too much and then have to loosen it in order to get it to fit into the cuff. And that for me is just, I guess a little easier. It makes me feel like I have a little more control because at least I'm letting things out and I can choose where I let it out from versus putting something in and having it sit a little loose and then having to try to get gathers where there is looseness all the way from the outside essentially. So here I've got quite a bit more 
room down here. So what I'll do is I'll just slowly let this out evenly. A little on this side, a little on that side. And just spread out the tighter gathers until these guys match up a little better. Because then, once we have these all set, we still have to fit them into the sleeve. Now the top of the sleeves don't need as much gathering as you would kind of think. Um, they do have quite a bit of a little poof on the top, so it does require a bit of gathering, but I feel like the first time I did this, I overgathered it and then had to let a bunch out, which again is my preferred method. I'd rather have too much and then take it out than not have enough. So I'll just gather those guys up, kind of even it out on the edge. And now you can already see the shape that the sleeve has just from the gathering. So you can see that little poof here. It's like a little bonnet. It's got a lot of fluff to it. Um, it's kind of crazy that, you know, you take something 2D, add a few strings to it, and it is a whole new shape. So I'll kind of match the other one up to this one now. These ones, these gathering stitches ended up really small. I don't, I think that's because my, um, I had a little snag in my bobbin. So just be mindful of that. You actually want to keep these very long so you have enough to grip with. Otherwise it's kind of hard to get it started. But that wasn't too bad. So I think that looks good. I think this one's actually a little less gathered so I'll just pull on a couple strings there those guys are all set and now we will move on to the next step so once these are gathered the next step is to stitch the inner sleeve seam closed I'm going to do this on my sewing machine and then go through and serge it as well just to make sure that the sleeve has enough strength on the inside because I don't want the inner seam like bursting because I didn't serge the edges so we'll go ahead and sew and then serge and then we get to move on to the sleeve band Okay, so now that we have these sleeves done, they are here and they're um, inside out, obviously, and we've got those stitched. I'm going to run a serging stitch here in a moment. And then once those are gathered, our next step is just to, our next step is to get the sleeve band ready to go. So we are going to go ahead and do that. And then after that, we will turn the one edge over, that'll be the kind of hem on the bottom of the sleeve. We will trim and press the seam allowance to three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Okay, so we have the two sleeve bands. This is part nine for the short sleeve version or part eight if you're doing the long sleeve version. I have them turned right sides together and you're just going to sew down across either end of the edge here. All right, so part 13, we're going to turn the unnotched edge of the sleeve band and press. And then we'll trim that pressed seam allowance to 3 eighths of an inch. So you'll notice, of course, I have a line, not a notch. Um, but it's not this edge. You want to do the opposite edge. And that's because the only reason you really notch this is, I mean, A, so you know which side to press. But then this edge is going to be lined up with the notch on the bottom of the sleeve. So make sure that you're leaving the edge that has your marking on it untouched and then just turn this edge here. Okay, so we're going to move on to putting the armband around the sleeve here. And I want to do something a little different than what the pattern asks for. So I'm going to try to 
keep it simple but also do what I want for my dress. So I want to add a little bit of lace um, on the cuff so that when the cuff is finished, the lace will actually be at the top of the cuff. But the way that I'm going to do that, because we would normally just attach the band to the sleeve right sides together, I'm actually going to attach or at least clip this piece of lace onto the right side of the fabric here so that when I sew the sleeve on right sides together, then, then this ends up being between the sleeve and the cuff. Does that make sense? So it'll be like a sandwich. This will all go over, I'll have to flip this inside out to put it over here and then this lace will be in the center. So I will try to show you that to the best of my ability. So I always start by clipping the seams together and then this has the notch and that's what you're going to line up to the notch on the other side of the sleeve here. But I'm just going to clip the front and then the back. I've already sewn this piece of lace into a loop as you saw. So now I'm just trying to make sure that it stays evenly around the sleeve. There we go. So now it is a attached by clips all the way around and then I'll actually flip this inside out because the sleeve band needs to be attached to the sleeve right sides together. So once I have that flipped inside out with the lace here, I'm going to put this over top of the sleeve. And you want to make sure when you're putting it in here too that you're mindful of where the seam is. Okay, so now that I have these seams lined up, I'm going to unclip that and actually line up the edge here so that the seams go either way. And that just kind of helps it to be flat. I find that if I line them up opposite to each other, that's how I get that nice like four point split like I had on the facing. Okay, so I just kind of straighten that out a little bit. And now I'm going to find the notch on this piece, which is right here. And I'm going to line that up with the notch on this piece right here. This is when actual notches are definitely helpful. I just am difficult. I like to be difficult and make things difficult for myself, apparently. So I go front to back and then I try to even it out and do the side, either side, just to kind of keep things even so you don't end up with like 50 or 70% of a sleeve on the left and then 30% on the right. All right, so for the most part that is together, but I like to pin it a bunch. And that's just, again, just to keep it all together so things aren't sliding around until you get it to the sewing machine. So I think that's good. I've got eight clips in there. So now I had already done this leaf previously because I wanted to decide how I wanted to sandwich the lace in there. So now I have both of these and all we need to do is go around the edge. You can either do this by hand or on the sewing machine. Okay, so once you have sewn around that circle like I just showed you, this is what your sleeve is going to look like when you turn it right sides out. Obviously yours will not have the lace like mine does unless you decide to add that on there. But this is what it will look like with the sleeve unfolded all the way out. Now the next step is to turn the sleeve piece underneath at the fold line, which is basically just in half, and it will cover the inside stitches and they want you to slip stitch it closed. Now I think this is really cute. I like the finish. I have done this before on my other shirt, but personally I think now that I've added the lace and I actually just slipped this sleeve on. So I like the way it looks here with the longer cuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just do like a little row of top stitching just to finish off the edge here. And I'm gonna leave them like this. Um, this one is fairly easy. You just go ahead and slip stitch. Uh, you would turn this inside out. 
You would slip stitch so that you would cover up all these stitching lines down in here all the way around. And then that'll give you that nice little, oop, it'll give you that nice little um, cuff there. So whatever your preference is, if you want to do that or if you just want to do a top stitch, I think either way is fine. But since I am sort of hacking this pattern a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. So now that you've top stitched the edge of your hem here, this is what you should have. You should have two full sleeves and the cuffs will be finished here. And since I went ahead and serged the inside of mine, you're going to have a nicely finished seam on the inside there, which is great because then when you're washing it, you don't have to worry about any fraying or any kind of craziness. All right, so the next and final, well, second to last step, I should say, is actually putting these sleeves into your shirt. So what we'll do is by checking the notches on the inside here, you will attach the, the double notch here with the, excuse me while I do this one-handed, with the double notch. So the double notches will go on the back side of the shirt and the single notches will go on the front side of the shirt. All right, so now that we have our shirt all pressed, so it's faced, it's pressed, I went ahead and tacked my seams down up here really quick, just off camera, nothing too crazy, just a few stitches in the side, uh, side seam there, and or shoulder seam, I should say. And so once you have that done, then you wanna flip your shirt so that it is inside out because we want to place the right sides of the shirt together, the right side of the arm to the right side of the back of the shirt. So you will grab your piece that corresponds to the correct side. I have my single notch here and my other single notch right here. So I usually find those first. I usually find those first and get that pinned or clipped, whatever your preference is, right in that area. And then you'll find your double notch on the back side and line that up with the double notch on your sleeve. And this is why when you're putting your markings or your notches on your patterns, you really want to make sure you are paying attention to where they are. You don't just want to put them on willy-nilly because you can end up misaligning your pieces. So here, once I have those two notches set up, I am, I am putting the side seams together. Again, I have the, I don't know how well you can see that, I have the side seam selvage going this way and the side seam or the I have the side seam going this way on the shirt and the side seam on the sleeve going this way towards towards the inside and I have those corners matched up and I am putting a clip right in the center so that should be nice and flat you shouldn't have any bubbling so you see how that fits together well that's exactly what you want to see so from there you will match the dots on the inside piece of your shirt to the dots, corresponding dots on the inside of your sleeve as well, just like you did with those cutout notches. Now, another thing I like to do, because the pattern specifically asked for this seam to be pressed forward, I'm also going to pin that down the, direct, the correct way with the armhole because I don't want to forget that and then when I'm sewing accidentally flip it or something silly. So I want to make sure that I have that pinned in the direction it needs to lay. So this is where you're going to adjust the gathers to ease the sleeve into the shirt. So I do have it a little bit, actually it's almost perfect, but it looks like I did let out a couple gathers by accident at some point. So 
I'm going to grab those strings again and just pull a little bit to make that sleeve a little smaller. Okay, so now looking on there, it looks like it's going to fit just about right. I'll pull just a little more there. Okay. So when you have that all sorted out, make sure you pinch the top seam down in whichever direction you have it going. I have it going towards the back of the shirt. And then I like to pin at least one more in this gathered section on either side just because that's the side that's a little unruly compared to the other side. All right, so now we've got that pinned. We'll go ahead and do the other side and then we will sew around. Okay, so now that we have the armholes all pinned or clipped and set to go, all you need to do is basically what you did with the sleeves when we sewed around those and I like to start in the armpit area, uh, the side seam and the armhole side seam. That way I know that at least that seam is going to be matched up. So I start there, go around in a circle, and we'll do that for both sides. And as we have been, you'll be sewing with a 5 8 allowance. Now the amount of material you will need for this gathered skirt greatly depends on your waist measurement and how long you want the skirt to be. Now this is just all of the fabric I have left over from the original amount that I bought at Joann's. I just measured it and I have 90 inches left. So it's 90 inches by 43, though when you include the selvage and all that kind of goofy um, selvage edge, it really cuts down about an inch. Um, so folded in half like this, it's about 21 inches long. I went ahead and measured from my waist point to where I want the dress to fall, which is right around my kneecap. And it looks like what I'll need is approximately 22 inches in length. Now I'll cut the one skirt piece in half. It's the left half and the right half of the, with the button placket on it. And then the second piece that I cut, I will leave on the fold essentially and just gather that entire part up for the back. So that way you have an even amount of gathers going all the way around but you still have room for the button placket and you can make use of the side seams. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out now and I will be back. All right so now I have all three skirt pieces and a lot of threads. I have the top piece that is folded in half. So this one is 23 inches long by 20 inches wide and then I have the two pieces here that I've cut in half if I can separate them that I have cut in half already and I've just I decided to serge all four edges because I like to serge stuff so all I need to do now is 
put gathering stitches, two rows of gathering stitches into each of these on the uh, two short pieces and then the one long piece since this one is folded in half. So basically the top of the skirt I need to gather in to fit my waist. Now that I have all of these gathering stitches put in, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing that I did with the sleeves earlier. I'm going to pull these little strings on the fashion side of the fabric. Oh, not that one, just these two. I'm go ahead and get this gathered. And then here is the long one. So this is gonna be twice as long as the other two. So I'll do the same thing. I'll grab the fashion side strings I'll probably get this to a point to the left side and then I'll start to gather from that other side. With longer pieces I do tend to gather from both sides of this fabric. I just, I find that I break strings less that way. Okay, so I have my bodice laid out here and I've got all the seams laid down where they're going to be. So these are the two side seams that this piece needs to fit in between. It's pretty close. I've just got about an inch and a half on either side that I still need to gather in. is going from side to seam to side seam. The front two pieces only need to go from side seam to button placket. Now I kind of left this front piece with less gathers because I am going to have to flip this over, flip over the serged edge, top stitch it down, and then this is going to become my placket. And then similar on the other side, that's where I will put the buttons on. So. Um, these guys need to go from the side seam over to the edge of the bodice here. However, this top part or the this front part where the facing panel is, I'm going to try to keep this as flat as possible to compensate for the buttons and button placket that need to go in. So I went ahead and I just clipped the skirt onto the bodice. I just wanted to see what it looked like before I sewed everything down. I actually haven't even sewn the skirt together. I just have it clipped uh, 
like six inches down from the waist because uh, that's pretty simple. You just sew the side seams together. Um, and since the back is one piece, you don't have to sew that. You don't have to worry about sewing that. Um, so yeah, it's just the side seams and then the front uh, where the button holes and buttons will go. I'm just going to flip over. I think I'm just going to top stitch it down. Nothing too crazy. Um, I'm not really going to make this I keep calling it a button placket. I'm not really going to insert any kind of specific placket, but I'm going to put the um, buttonholes on the on this side, which would be when I'm wearing it, it'll be my right side, but the left side when you're looking at it, and then the buttons on this side. So I'm just going to flip those over and top stitch them down. And then when I sew this together, they'll line up fine right there. jumped into doing my buttonholes after doing a couple tests and I totally forgot to talk about button placement. So the M8040 pattern actually comes with an buttonhole guide. So what you would do here is um, you can kind of see that it's got the curve here and the pointed edge. So you line that up with your shirt and I usually just clip it. That's what I did here. I used my little clips here and then just clip it right on there so that it holds it steady. And then as you lay that down, I cut little slits into my pattern piece and then you can just use your, like a water soluble or heat soluble um, writing utensil. And then I just stick the pen into the hole and go back and forth a few times just so that it leaves a nice mark on here. I don't think you can see any of my marks anymore since I went over them with the buttonhole foot but yeah they'll leave a nice little mark on your fabric so that is how you use this guy and for different versions of the shirt you'll have more or less I had less on the actual bodice part but then I had to add some onto the skirt so I continued to use this guide and then when I got to the point where it was too long I just took the guide off placed the one of the last buttonholes over the 
or the guide over one of the last buttonholes and then continued it down um, almost to the bottom of my dress. I think I just have like a foot, a foot that doesn't have a button on it. And after trying it on and kind of deciding how tightly I wanted the dress clothes, I noticed that this was a little, a little high, I think. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add one or two more buttonholes to the bottom just for a little more security in case it's windy or something like that. But yeah, it's pretty easy. And then I will insert the footage of me putting the buttonholes into this actual dress. They aren't too difficult if you have a buttonhole foot. If you don't, there are other ways that you can create buttonholes uh, without the specific foot. And I will link to a video on how to do that just because there are already so many on YouTube. I don't think I need to make another one. So anyway, that is how you use the button guide. And the same thing goes for the other side. You can use it to place the demarcation where you want the buttons to go. You can see mine here. There's one because uh, I used a white a white marker. These are a little crazy, uh, a little big because I just wanted to make sure that the marking actually went through. Um, but that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and attach all the buttons to the little areas that I marked and they are a little further in than the guide would actually say, but I wanted this to close a little tighter. So um, I kind of went off on my own there as well. So here is the Emmy shirt dress. I guess that's what I'll call it just to make it a little easier, but this is the finished garment. I'll go ahead and insert a clip of uh, myself with this on in a little bit, but I wanted to show it off a little uh, closer for you guys So you can see I have my I had some sand green tags made up a while back and I like to put those um, in my makes just I don't know it feels a little more personalized and then um, I also have some Handmade by Sabrina labels in there as well. I'll link the Etsy shop that I got those from in the description box below um, and the buttons, I don't remember where I got these buttons from. I've had them in my stash for a while. Um, I have the gold version as well that I made with the other M8040 top, and I love them. The only problem that I have with them is, for some reason, these pop off a lot. Um, I'm not sure why. I might end up replacing them. I just think that the kind of shank, they're mixed between a shank and a flat button, and for some reason, they just... I tried to put them on a few different ways and they just keep coming off on both this dress and the other shirt I made as well. So it's the only two times I've ever used these buttons and um, yeah, I'm just not super pleased with them. So I think I might find some other buttons to put on this dress. Um, I just not sure what kind I'd like to have. So I'll have to take a look and, and look for some of those. But overall, I love this dress. It is so comfortable and really, really roomy. And I think it's really cute. Uh, I love the lace detail that I added. I'm trying to pay more attention to the details, the smaller details in clothing that I make so that the clothes that I make actually look like something that you might buy in the store. I feel like these little details are the kind of things that add character to your clothing. And I really want to focus in 2020 on taking the time to add those details and pay more attention to those things so that my clothes overall look better when they're finished. So uh, let me know. I kind of have been joking that this is very, this is my very grandma chic dress. Um, I keep asking my husband if it's too grandma -y, if I've been watching too many episodes of the Golden Girls, but either way, I really like it. Grandma or not, I'm going to wear it all the time, but I think it turned out well. I might make a dress similar to this in the future. I just really love the neckline and how it does have a V, but it has a lot of coverage as well. A little vintage, a little grandma, a little cute sundress, and I love all of those things. So anyway, again, I'm very pleased with it. I'm happy with the way it turned out. It came together in a little over a day. I wanted to finish it in one day, but I got distracted doing things around the house and I wanted to let the hem hang. It wasn't cut on the bias, so I probably didn't need to let the hem hang for overnight, but I have had a couple dresses shift after a while and um, I just decided to try to eliminate that as much as possible because I had the lace um, on the edge of it. I don't want to have to go back and rehem it if I don't have to. So that is partially why it took two days, almost two days to make. Um, but for the most part, if I counted it out just by hour, it probably took about eight hours to put together total from, from cutting out to finishing. So uh, I would say, yeah, you could make it in a day if you cut it out ahead of time and then 
just sewed it up all at the same time. Um, I tend to do a little better when I do that. That way it's all prepped and I don't have to worry about cutting stuff out. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up so I know that you like this kind of content. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.